Do you find it difficult to keep track of client communications, manage leads, or maintain a clear project pipeline? In today's world, staying on top of relationships is key to running a successful architecture practice. And that's where a CRM system comes in. But what exactly is a CRM? And how can it help you to streamline your operations and grow your business? That's exactly what we're going to help you with in this episode of Architecture Business Club, the weekly podcast for solo and small firm architecture practice owners just like you who want to build a profitable, future-proof architecture business that fits around their life. I'm John Clayton, your host. If you're a small practice leader or sole practitioner in architecture, struggling to find clarity or reach your goals, consider working with me. I offer personalised one-to-one support through coaching, consulting and mentoring. This tailored approach helps you navigate your unique path to success. Whether it's growing your practice, working fewer hours or building your team, I've got you covered. Just click the link in the show notes to book a call with me to discuss your options or email john, that's J-O-N, at architecturebusinessclub.com for more information. Now let's talk about CRM systems. Hey everyone, thank you for joining me today. Today we are going to be talking all about CRM systems. Uh, So we're going to cover the basics, what is a CRM system, and then we're going to go into a little bit more detail to give you a really good overview of what a CRM system is and why it's so important. So CRM, that stands for Customer Relationship Management, and this is really, it's really essential for any business, especially architecture practices that relying on maintaining strong client relationships over long project timelines. So it's a tool that's designed to help you manage relationships with potential and current clients by organizing communications, tracking leads and storing all of the key data in one place. So imagine juggling multiple projects with different timelines, stakeholders and details. CRM system like Salesforce or HubSpot allows you to track every client interaction, ensuring no details slip through the cracks. And even if you're a small firm or a practice of one, a CRM can help you keep a full pipeline without feeling overwhelmed and allow you to respond quickly to new leads. A CRM system can be a complex software platform with multiple features and automations, Or to begin, it can be as simple as a spreadsheet and they can cost hundreds of pounds or dollars a month. Or you can start by creating a simple CRM system for free. So what are some of the benefits of using a CRM in your architecture practice? So let's take a look at some of the advantages of using a CRM to manage those different relationships, which can be a challenge, as I'm sure you know. So CRM systems can help automate routine tasks like sending follow-up emails, managing client contacts, and helping manage marketing campaigns. So you can free up time for design and uh, interacting with your clients in a more personal way. So consider a scenario where you're working on three large-scale residential projects while also allowing time for meetings with new potential clients. CRM system like Monograph, which is designed specifically for architects, can automate follow-ups with those prospects. You can track which stage they're at in your sales funnel and even set reminders for when you need to touch base with them. So this allows you to focus on the higher value tasks, knowing your system is handling the repetitive tasks in the background. And when Project communications are split over multiple channels. So, for instance, email, phone calls, messaging, etc. It's really easy for things to get missed. But by using a CRM, you can keep track of all of those communications in one place. So nothing gets missed. So let's take a look at some of the key features to look for in a CRM. Not all CRMs are created equal, so it's important to know what matters most for you in your practice. So some features might include project tracking, 
Some systems may include integration with design software like AutoCAD or Revit, communication history, automation for repetitive tasks, and reporting tools to help you better understand your business's performance. So suppose you run a small firm and need to manage both your design work and and client communications. You could look for a CRM like Archie Office that integrate project management with client relationship management, allowing you to manage deadlines, communications and invoicing all from one platform. This could be particularly useful if you're juggling both business development and the execution of those projects. I've recently been experimenting with an alternative called Break Cold. I've been particularly impressed by its integration with LinkedIn. So if LinkedIn is one of your main social platforms online for your business, that piece of software is definitely worth checking out. When it comes to choosing the right CRM for your practice, you need to consider what software approach is the best fit for the size and needs of your practice. The right CRM will depend on factors such as the scale of your projects, your team size, and your business goals. You might wish to consider things such as your budget, if you have one, if you have budget available for a CRM, ease of use, team collaboration, any specific requirements you might have and how you're intending to use it. Is it going to be used more for lead management? Is it going to be used more to manage your projects or for marketing automations or a bit of everything? If you're a sole practitioner or a small firm with limited resources, a CRM like Zoho or Capsule might be a better fit because they're more affordable and easier to use compared to some of the more complex CRM systems like Salesforce. On the other hand, a larger practice with multiple teams and high project volume may benefit from a more robust system like HubSpot, which offers more extensive customization and integration options. I recommend choosing a CRM tool that has the right level of sophistication for your business. If you're a business of one, then you could consider starting with something as simple as a Google Sheet or Excel spreadsheet. And there are free CRM templates available online. If you need something with more features, but not quite as sophisticated as a dedicated CRM system, then you could consider using task management software like Asana, ClickUp, Monday, or Notion. And many of those include free CRM templates that you can plug and play and you can adapt to suit your own needs. If you're a bigger practice, then you may wish to consider a fully featured, dedicated CRM system, which would be normally a paid solution. Remember, don't forget to download the Architecture Business Blueprint, the step-by-step formula to freedom for architects, architectural technologists, and architectural designers. You can grab the blueprint without any charge at architecturebusinessclub.com forward slash blueprint. And if you're enjoying this episode, then please leave a five-star review or rating wherever you listen to podcasts. Now back to the show. So how can you implement a CRM system successfully? So you want to do this to ensure there's a smooth transition starting to use the software and that you get long-term results from it. You should consider setting some goals for the use of the CRM, such as improving client retention or increasing the number of leads or the conversion rate of those leads. And also, if you're working with a team, you're going to need to allow to train your team and migrate existing data correctly so that key steps are implemented. So let's say you've decided to implement a CRM system like Pipedrive. You'd start by setting up workflows for lead management and project follow-ups. Make sure your team understands how to use the system by providing training sessions and ensure that all your client data, including past communications, is accurately imported into the CRM. It's also useful to define metrics for success, such as reducing the time it takes to respond to new inquiries. To begin I recommend setting up three categories or pipelines in your CRM. One for leads or prospects. These are the people that may want to buy from you at some point in the future. Another category for clients. So you'd move your prospects 
into this pipeline once they've signed up to work with you and become a client. And finally, a pipeline for strategic relationships. So these are people who could help you to get more clients in the future or help your business to grow in some way. So these could be contractors, developers, estate agents, engineers, energy assessors, landscape architects, event organisers, members of industry associations or, or even competitors. I recommend taking the time to think about your current workflows for each of these categories and making a note of the steps or stages in each workflow and look for ways to improve those workflows. So, for example, your sales workflow or sales pipeline might include stages like lead identified, connected, so that's connecting with that lead or prospect, conversation started, lead qualified, meeting booked, proposal or offer made, negotiation, and then won or lost that deal, and then post-purchase. Your project pipeline might follow RIBA work stages such as strategic definition, preparation and brief, etc. Or if you're following AIA work stages in the USA, could be schematic design, design development, construction documents, etc. Or you can define your own project stages that make sense to your way of working, which could be initial meeting, survey, design meeting, etc. And your pipeline for those strategic relationships we talked about might include steps like partner identified, connected, conversation started, coffee meeting booked, collaborated or partnership agreed. It's really down to you to decide what the stages are in those different pipelines. So as I suggested, take a look at the way you're doing things now and then look to see if there's any ways to optimize those steps and stages in each of those pipelines. So how can you get the most out of your CRM system after that initial setup to ensure it continues to add value? So I would emphasize the importance of consistent use and using the data to refine your processes over time. So CRMs can also help inform strategic business decisions by providing data on client behavior and project performance. So for example, imagine that after six months of using your CRM, you notice through reporting that most of your leads are coming from a specific referral source, but the conversion rate is low. You could use that insight to adjust your follow-up strategy for those leads, improving your overall conversion rate. You can regularly re review your CRM data to help you identify trends and refine your marketing tactics and optimize client communications. I think the key to making having a CRM worthwhile is to be consistent. So keep using your CRM, make it a daily habit, and use it as a tool to identify what tasks need to be completed to keep your sales pipeline full and your project pipeline moving. You don't want either pipeline to get blocked or even worse, to be empty. So to wrap things up, CRM systems aren't just tools for large corporations. They're really an essential tool for all architecture practices, no matter what the size, from keeping track of client communications to automating repetitive tasks, the right CRM can help streamline your operations, improve relationships, and, and ultimately help you grow your business. And as you start exploring your options for a CRM, focus on finding a system that fits your practice's specific needs and make sure that you use it consistently to maximise the benefit. So thanks for tuning into this episode. I hope that you have a better understanding of what a CRM system is and how they could help your practice thrive. And if you're thinking about implementing a CRM system or have any questions, then feel free to reach out. Next time, I chat with architect Doug Hodgson about mental health and well-being in architecture. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Architecture Business Club. If you liked this episode, think other people might enjoy it, or just want to show your support for the show, then please leave a glowing five-star review or rating wherever you listen to podcasts. It would mean so much to me and makes it easier for new listeners to discover the show. 
And if you haven't already done so, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss another episode. If you want to connect with me, you can do that on most social media platforms. Just search for at Mr. John Clayton. The best place to connect with me online, though, is on LinkedIn. You can find a link to my profile in the show notes. Remember, running your architecture business doesn't have to be hard, and you don't need to do it alone. This is Architecture Business Club.